Morning everyone. Uh, today I just wanted to quickly show you, uh, well maybe quickly, how to take cardboard boxes and make an image similar to this. Um, so these aren't my images, they're actually by Chelsea Harris who's in our uh, box group. If, uh, if you are coming from YouTube and aren't already in our group, feel free to join. It's always free to join. Um, I've got lots of tutorials and, and great advice, lots of great um, conversations that happen on there. So be sure to check it out. It's called In the Box Education. Anyways, Chelsea Harris is one of our um, members in the group and has so kindly taken these images and has allowed me to use them for... Uh, practicing and to do a little tutorial video for you guys. So these are the images she's given to me. Um, I'm going to show you quickly what they looked like before I did anything to them. So I do all my editing in Lightroom. I do um, like my exposure, contrast, all that good stuff in Lightroom. I find it easier and then I export to Photoshop. So these ones uh, let me see. For some reason, my computer's moving slow. Of course, never fails when I want to do a tutorial. Anyway, so some of the um, the box images I've noticed, um, it is best if you can have the sides already tucked away. Oh, here we go. So this is the original one. So if you can kind of have the sides pulled back as far as possible, so you get that nice clean line along the edges. It makes it a heck of a lot easier when you're editing in Photoshop. So for example, this one here was a little bit on an angle. So all I did is I used my the crop overlay and I just straightened it out, lining up, lining up the lines there, straightening it out as best I can. And then what I do in Lightroom to make my life a lot easier is I start shrinking them down already in Lightroom. So all I'm doing is I'm just cropping them down in Lightroom as close as I can without cutting any off, cutting off any important parts. So his toes are sticking out there, so I need to make sure I don't cut that off. And I don't want the bottom flap in the photo because it'll just overhang. So I just did that in all of my photos. Um, so what I did is I did that, and then I click all of the photos, and then I usually sync it. And so I sync all of the uh, items. I don't want to do it right now because I've already done that. But that's how I would normally, I'll click on sync so you can see. But I normally would sync everything, synchronize. And then I go into each photo quickly, um, just looking at it, make sure is the crop still good. If not, I just adjust slightly, tweak it here and there as I need to. And then once I have all my photos the way I want them and I think they're good to go, I have them all highlighted and then I right click with my extremely slow computer waiting for the pop-up to come up <laughs> anyway so I'll, I right click and then what I do is I click edit in Photoshop as layers sorry guys I don't know why my computer was working fine like half an hour ago and now it's like slower than molasses stuck in the snow Ugh. oh this is always wonderful when you get that screen too. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> you know usually when you get that screen that's a, gonna be a shutdown or a reboot of the Lightroom or something. Okay, sorry, okay. I'm going to highlight all of them and I right click and I do export. No, sorry I don't do export, silly me. I do edit in, edit in and then I do open as layers in Photoshop. I'm not going to click that right now because as you can see my computer is slower than molasses so I've already done that and they all come in like this so they all come in one by one by one um, but in one file up at the top so it makes it easy to drag and drop them. So these are all my images that have come in as you can see they're all different sizes because I had some that had longer I had to extend for the legs and yada yada yada. So what I normally do is I highlight them all and I just shrink them down a little bit. Um, when you do this, make sure you're holding your aspect ratio so your little uh, people or adults or whatever you're using uh, don't become all distorted. So I'm just going to shrink them down a little bit. And then 
I already have a new page opened up. It's my untitled one. I'm doing it as a 12 by 16, um, just because I know from already doing it, that's the best size for me. You may need to play around with the sizes or just kind of take a guess and see what's gonna work best for you. Um, so I brought them in, as you can see, those are a little bit small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna resize a little bit. I just kind of wanna make sure that the, the top photo, for example, is only taking up about one third of the page so far which I think it's not quite one-third, but maybe I'll do it a little bit bigger. All right, so that's just going to transform. And then what I do from here is they're all in layers there. So I just want to kind of arrange them to where I think is best. And I don't actually don't remember what my other one was arranged as, so I'm just going to put them in right now to where I want to put them. So that one was in the middle. And let's put this one here, this one here, and go put that one there. It's This is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle too. When you're doing these, it's like you're kind of just, you know, where do you want where do you want your photos to be? It, it's completely a personal thing where you want them to be. So anyways, as you can see this one here, I left the flap on. I should have removed it when I was in Lightroom because flaps coming out that way will block, as you can see, the other kid over there. So unless you already pre-planned it where you have a child maybe on the opposite side peeking around like they're grabbing the flap, but you really have to pre-plan for to make things like that work. So what I'm actually going to do for that is I'm going to highlight just that layer over here. And I'm going to use my marquee tool, the little dancing ants. And I'm just going to actually just delete that part because I don't want it at all. I know I'm not going to want to bring it back either. So I just want it gone. Um, so now I've got my photos in. But as you can see, some of them are bigger than others, just from the way, you know, I cropped them in Lightroom. So what I want to do is I normally just kind of go along and check, pick the size that I want to use. And just kind of go along and I can kind of check and see, like I can tell this one here is a little bit small. So I'm just going to edit free, transform that in expand expand it just a little bit and this one I think is a little bit big so I'm going to edit retransform that one and just shrink it a little bit okay so now the fun is going to begin sometimes it takes a lot of maneuvering them around like you know putting one layer on top of another um, because there's no template that you're working with you're you're literally just working with your boxes so what I found the easiest to do was to find where I wanted to start. So take my middle one, find the center. So I've got it centered there. And then we'll just kind of play that one by ear. So we've got that centered. And then I'm just going to kind of tack these along to the sides. And so as you can see on some of them, um, she folded the box out a little bit, but the actual box line is back there. So I was actually editing back to those lines um, just to keep the box uniform and simple. And that's what I chose to do. Everyone is different. You can do it differently if you want. That's up to you. That's what I chose to do. So I'm just lining them up to where I think they are going to be best. And I can tell right now by how much overlap is here, I'm going to have to shrink them down. So I'm going to actually do that right now. Highlight them all, edit free transform since they're all together already. I'm just going to shrink them just a tiny bit. And then I'm actually going to go through and just do a really quick sort. So put all my bottom layer ones on the bottom, all my top layer ones on the top. And middle in the middle so that way I can take my tops and middles 
I know I need to move them up a bit, like that. And I think it still might be a little bit big. So again, this is all kind of trial and error as you are making them. And I'm going to have to cut this video a little bit short because I only have 15 minutes to do uh, a tutorial on this thing that I use. So I'm going to kind of speed it along a little bit. So, but I wanted to show you quickly. So that's what I do here. And then I find it's easiest or best if you go up here, there might be another way to do it. But if you go up here to where your rulers are, I just grab one grab and pull down and you get the ruler tool and all I'm doing is I'm lining up to one of my boxes like so and then I'm going to do it to the sides and do it to all my sides like so. So now I've got all my um, pretty kind of I guess you could say it's like a grid so as you can see this one here is a little bit off so I'm going to move it a bit and it's not even close to being like it's on a bit of an angle so I'm going to edit transform and I'm just going to warp this one now I know where I want it to warp to to be even and in line and a little tiny warp like this you're not you're not warping much it's not going to affect the the uh image too much. So I'm just going to warp that a little bit just so his foot doesn't look so awkward like that. And then I go through and I do that for each photo. So this is where you might need to you know overlap one um, like this one I had to leave a bit out because of her hand so you might just want to put this one over top for now so you can see what you're doing and then just Maybe just kind of play around with them. I needed to expand that one a bit. Edit, free, tra transform, warp. And just warp that out. And this one. So now I'm going to hide the middle one so I can see what I'm working with here. So what I normally do here, I actually am going to warp it first. And I'm going to get it all so all my corners are lined up like I would do with a nine box or any of my boxes actually. I want all my corners to line up perfectly because I'm a little bit anal like that. And all my lines to line up because I like nice clean lines. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is instead of masking away because I personally am not a huge fan of masking, I'm going to grab my little marquee tool again, my dancing ants. And when you do this, it for some reason it stops at that grid line that you've got there, so it's not going to go any further. And I just click delete. And I do the same down here. Because I know I don't want those parts. All I want to do is mask around her little hand there. And same with down here. I know I don't want that overhang of the box, so I'm just going to click delete. And then I do Control D, Command D on a Mac just to delete those dancing ants. So now if I line them up here, arrange them, so first, second, and third, as you can see her little hand is going to overhang. What I would do is put a, clip, a mask on there, get my brush, and here's where you would take your time. Whoops. I'm going to actually take that back. I want, do I want white? No, I want black. Oh. Sorry, I have it on the wrong thing, that's why. I want on the layer mask. And... Oh, I put it on the wrong thing. My bad. So, there you go. And if you oh, ma mask off too much, just bring it back in. So, that's really quick just to show you. Um, and then, you're going to go through and do that on all of your boxes there. And this one here, you're going to mask out a any dangling parts are going to mask out, but you're going to go through and line them all up. And it's going to end up looking like this. So I've got all my corners lined up. I did not use any template for this. This was all by hand. And then all I did was in my background, my white layer, I just used my paint bucket. I used my paint bucket. I held the alt button and picked a color from my box and colored the background. And voila!
we have a cardboard box tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.